Uh, the question is of part two, stand part. The Mr. call Chairman. goes to the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I uh, want uh, to uh, address uh, respectfully Stephen Browning's amendment uh, or proposed amendment to clause 15 in supplementary order paper 124 and explain why it is that the Labour Party will not be favouring that amendment. Uh, thank you for uh, consulting us about it and the way in which you've gone about that. Uh, the uh, explanatory note to the, uh, or the letter that um, came with the uh, supplementary order paper said that one of the things that the um, amendment uh, intends to do is to stop um, people... Uh, um, uh, will, if, in its current form, it says it encourages biopiracy of indigenous resources. And I understand the member's concern and there have been some, uh, some quite, I suppose, famous uh, cases around the world that have been referred to. One uh, it relates to the scientific properties of the neem tree, which is a, a, an Indian tree, as I understand it, if I got that wrong right. Yep, it's an Indian tree that uh, the extracts of which have long been used as a control of, um, of insects and other um, fungal infections in trees. And there, was, uh, there were patents taken out that were then uh, said to have been used to stop the traditional uses of the neem tree, despite the fact uh, that that had been a long-standing practice. And secondly, there were assertions, uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that... Any, I, I don't understand enough to know that whether all of these assertions are right, but secondly, there were assertions that it seemed unfair that the... Um, insecticidal and antifungicide uh, effects of neem tree extracts could be commercially uh, taken by someone who claims that they've discovered the, the, uh, the chemical reason that that's occurring uh, in a way that prevented other people from doing it despite the fact that that already has done it. And I agree that seemed unfair. Uh, and if that was properly described, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, you know, I, I have problems with that. But, uh, uh, that doesn't mean to say that I think that this amendment uh, can be supported because uh, what this says th is that you won't be able to patent organisms, including plant varieties, and trays in organisms, uh, and that's the issue that I want, I want to deal with. Now, uh, we know that we have a, a lot of challenges environmentally in the world. One of the challenges that we have is that the form of energy that we use at the moment produces carbon emissions that are uh, put to the atmosphere. Uh, we know that uh, in order to reduce emissions, we need to do lots of things. One of the things that we may need to do is to, uh, to uh, bring forward scientific research into uh, organisms that help prevent that uh, occurring or enable other substitutionary forms of evidence that are not high in greenhouse gas emissions. Now, for example, um, the conversion of, uh, of uh, um, plant material into um, biofuels may require the use of, or may be advantaged by the use of um, uh, bacteria or other organisms that are discovered in uh, volcanic vents deep at sea. Uh, that, uh, these thermophiles, as I think they're called, uh, uh, organisms that can survive very high temperatures. And I think there is a proper question uh, to be asked or to, to be asked by those who are researching in uh, favour of making those discoveries as to whether what they are discovering is something that is novel, that is of utility, and that was not known previously in a way that should be patentable. And I find it hard to see a distinction, a hard distinction drawn in respect of that sort of discovery that would mean that it shouldn't be patentable, and I think that the societal disbenefit of preventing patents in those areas would be that we don't have discoveries that help us overcome some of these other planetary challenges that we face. So, uh, Mr Speaker, I think that uh, if I properly understand that, and it's, po it's possible that my understanding is wrong, um, and if it is, I'd, I'd invite uh, Mr Browning to point it out, but um, uh, and I'm, not, I'm not here in saying whether those discoveries should be made through um, or variations in the organism should be... Uh, I'm not, I don't think this is through this a debate about genetic modification or more traditional technologies. I think the same principle applies to both here, which is not to advocate for genetic modification. It's just to say that the same principle applies. 
And uh, if I give another example, the technology that is being pursued by Lanzatech, Mr Honourable Chairman, that is being pursued by Lanzatech, which is uh, taking the flue stream gases of steel mills that are uh, carbon monoxide, I understand, rather than carbon dioxide, and using a process to convert that carbon monoxide into ethanol, which is a fuel that can then be used as a substitute for fossil fuels. Uh, and overall, the environmental impact of steel production is reduced uh, as a consequence. Now, my understanding is that the uh, process does involve organisms that um, are going to be modified through technology in order to make them more efficient so that that becomes a viable technology. Now, Lanzatech couldn't do that uh, and couldn't raise the money to make that uh, advance in science if it weren't for the protection that it gets through patents. Um, and my understanding of this amendment proposed by Stephen Browning is that if it passed, it could prevent that patent's been granted, which would then cut off the money for Lanzatech. Uh, well, it wouldn't cut off the money for Lanzatech. I think it probably would. If they couldn't get an economic return from their investment, they would be less likely to make an investment in it. And so for those reasons, sir, um, based on our current understanding of this amendment, uh, the Labour Party will not be uh, supporting that supplementary order paper. I call Stephen Browning. Thank you, um, Mr Chair, um, and I, I will address uh, that aspect straight away. Uh, with, in terms of biofuels, bacteria and other